For generations, we've been taught that most Native Americans are descendants of a band of prehistoric hunters who walked to the New World from Asia about 12,000 years ago. Hunters left their stone points and butchered animal bones at kill sites all across North America. Radiocarbon dating in the 1950s showed that the oldest site was 11,400 years old. 11,400 years ago marked the end of the last ice age, a period when much of North America had been buried beneath massive glaciers up to two miles thick. When you've got that much ice on land, what happens is, is that it draws essentially water out of the oceans. So with that much ice on land, sea levels worldwide are lowered. By lowering sea levels, you expose the continental shelf between Siberia and Alaska. And so you create this entryway, this land bridge. And that made it possible for people to walk to the Americas. As the Ice Age came to an end, an ice-free corridor appeared between the receding glaciers opening the door to the Americas for the first time, it seemed, in human history. As that corridor opens up, maybe about 11,500, 12,000 years ago, so it all seemed to work out very, very beautifully in terms of the timing of getting these New World peoples from Asia into the Americas. But now there's been some real changes in the thinking of this. And this, this model is, is too simple. The biggest challenge to the story comes from the Southern Hemisphere. In 1996, a group of prominent archaeologists met in southern Chile at a place called Monteverde. They saw weapons, tools, and other artifacts dated to 12,500 years old. More evidence comes from southern Brazil. In prehistoric rock shelters, archaeologists have found some of the oldest human remains in the New World. One skeleton called Lucia, is more than 11,000 years old. The date of 11,000 makes her potentially the oldest skeleton in the New World, her early age, combined with data from Monte Verde, which is at least 12 to 13,000 years old, certainly means that people must have been migrating into South America much earlier than we previously thought. We don't really know who these early people were. We don't know how many people came, and we don't know when they came in. So the whole idea about one migration across the Bering Land Bridge 12,000 years ago, and moving into America, accounting for all peoples, all languages, all cultures, is now thrown out. It's gone. The Ice Age glaciers that once blocked the way from Asia to North America began to recede only about 12,000 years ago. If people were coming into the New World before that, how did they get past the ice? Archaeologists are now searching for answers along the Alaskan coast. Yarovara is one of several Native Americans on the project. It's really exciting every time when you so much as clink a rock. It could be an artifact. You never know what it could be. It could be a 10,000-year-old tool. It could be a bone. It could be, it could be anything. You just don't know. And so whenever you hear anything, you have to go around it really carefully and find out what it is. This excavation has uncovered a continuous record of caribou, fox, and bear bones dating back 50,000 years. Also in this cave, we found seal bones that appeared to be scavenged by bears. What this suggests is that bears survived the entire last period of glaciation. And if bears could have survived here, it's certainly clear that humans could have also. It appears that the Ice Age glaciers were not a barrier to the New World after all. Parts of the coast were ice-free, even when glaciers covered half of North America. So a coastal migration route would have been open to the early people of Asia. Then, as the glaciers began to recede between 11 and 12,000 years ago, the interior route opened up. A natural pathway, perhaps, for nomadic hunters from Northeast Asia. 
So these could be very, very different populations coming into the new world, literally thousands of years apart from one another, possibly from different sources in northeastern Asia. We don't really know that. But certainly we are looking at the possibility of multiple migrations into the new world, possibly going on different routes. All stories of early human history are incomplete. Advances in human genetics, archaeology, and anthropology will add new chapters, or perhaps rewrite it altogether. <laughs>